Hey everyone, I'm Ryan Kennedy. I'm the pastor here at Free Spiritual Community. We are a community for addicts, loved ones of addicts and spiritual refugees. And for three weeks, we are in this series called Boundaries, Loving the Addict in Your Life. Last week, now we have a, a guest storyteller every week. Last week we had uh, the fiance of someone who had battled addiction and is in recovery and, and she gave us uh, all kinds of stories and tools around boundaries and why boundaries are important. This week we have John and Carrie Allison with us. They are parents of an addict in recovery and they're gonna talk to us more about boundaries and next week, it is a three week series, so the third week, we are going to have a clinician, an author, uh, share with us from a family perspective of the importance of boundaries for family. So I hope you all join us for next week as well as we close down the series. John and Carrie, so grateful you guys are with us this evening. Thank you for being here. Thank you for the vulnerability of, of sharing some of your story and your willingness to share that with us and with other people who are going to uh, see this. Uh, so just to let you all know, John and Carrie, they are, uh, as I said a minute ago, the loved ones of an addict, the parents of an addict who's in recovery. Uh, you've also had other, other family members. You're not new to this. Um, you're, you've also been members of this free community almost from the very beginning. Uh, when we opened the doors at Free uh, at our current location, you guys, I think, were there the very first week. First week. So early timers. Yeah. And you all have been married 35 years. Uh, and I think that's important because you guys have done this together. You've gone through this journey of loving your daughter through this battle of addiction, this ugly battle of addiction, and you've stayed together. It has not always been easy. You've weathered the storm. You're still weathering uh, the storm because this work never ends, the work of boundaries. And so what I, I want people to hear, uh, some of your story and how boundaries, this is hard stuff. I said it last week that we're talking about the heart stuff here. Um, and so part of me, I, I want to tread lightly and with grace because this is the closest stuff to your heart as parents watching your daughter. This is at the very core of who you are. There's nothing closer to your heart. Uh, so I know some of this conversation is tender and I want people to hear how boundaries are hard. They don't come naturally. They don't come easily for many of us. Tell us a bit about that. Well, we, um, in our experience, in all our experiences, um, you know, boundaries don't come naturally. Uh, boundaries aren't something that we're born to know about or how to handle. Um, when you uh, when you have a, a loved one that's 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 struggling, and uh, your first nature is is nurturing. It's always. What can I do? What can I do better? What, how, how can I? When, how can I take the pain away? Um, and as things progress, you find that you can't take the pain away, and uh, you, you you struggle with with uh, uh, doing more and more and more. But what you what you eventually find is that. Um, when you when you uh, when you eventually come to that point of I can't keep doing it the same way every day, and this is my bat, you, you'll finally find something. You get to a point and you say I can't keep doing what I've been doing in the past because it's making it worse. And when you come to that conclusion, that is a boundary. Yeah. Even though you don't really get like oh I just created a boundary. Yeah. And it starts to feel better. And Kerry, you were telling me that. Um... It just wasn't, it, it, this This isn't how you, how you were raised. You weren't raised with like, here's what boundaries look like and here's how I'm gonna set it up. Yeah. But you said yeah. it, even, even as a child growing up, you can remember not wanting to hurt people, not wanting yeah. to hurt someone's feelings. Yeah, I was always, um, I was always afraid to say no to anybody and I was always afraid to, um, I shouldn't say afraid, I mean, but I, I didn't want to hurt anybody's feelings and, and I didn't realize that boundaries are for me. Mm not for them 
that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. So um, that I've learned is that the boundary is for my own happiness. I think you all used the phrase, you were addicted to the addict. Yes. Is it because you are so consumed with, is she okay? <clears throat> What's happening right now? Yeah, it was just, um, where is she? How is she? When she was happy, I was happy. When she was down, I was down. It was kind of an enmeshment yeah. of, you know, being like, I, I became part of her, you know, like her sadness became my sadness. And I don't know, I don't know how to explain it really, but it's, we were addicted to the addict, yeah. you know, like all our waking thoughts were about how is she? Is she okay? And what can we do next? It was always, we were, it was always, I was, I was doing something I was preparing every day. Every time I planned my day, I planned on something bad happening tomorrow. Mm. It was really, it was stressful. So when, when I would plan my week, I said, okay, I would, I need to do everything Monday and Tuesday because I don't know what Wednesday and Thursday is going to bring. So I would always be planning for something that hasn't happened yet. So living in that constant trauma. Yeah, it's always, yeah. It was... So walk us through the journey a little bit of when did you realize <clears throat> when you were um, watching your daughter battle addiction walk us through the journey a little bit of when did you realize uh -oh, uh oh we're in trouble not she's in trouble when we get that uh oh we're in trouble we need some boundaries um for me it was probably um you know, we went we went for quite a few years with a bunch of chaos in our life, and we, um, I got a little distracted at work, obviously, because you know, as a mom, all you want to do is protect your child, um, and I started making mistake after mistake after mistake at work, um, and my boss finally came to me and said, "I don't know what's going on with you, but you keep this up, we're gonna have to let you go," and that was that was like the light that came on for me it's like you know my job was suffering you know my friends and family were suffering everything so was that like a, a moment of embarrassment for you was that like a, a moment of oh i was oh my goodness, totally mortified yeah yeah i mean i was mortified um and because i've i've always prided myself on doing a good job and and i did and i worked for this person for probably six years five years before this happened so he knew i could do a good job but yeah. I was having a bad year um, so anyway that was kind of the the light bulb moment for me is that um, you know I could lose my job we could lose our home we could lose everything you know that we worked so hard for um, and you know at that point I was just like you know we didn't have any friends we didn't have family and, you know. and help people understand that when you say my work was suffering we were losing friendships family relationships were suffering it, why is that well and for people I, who would I, say to you well why couldn't you just let her be this is why couldn't you kick her out why couldn't you just this oh, is yeah. your life everybody period. had their own advice trust yeah. me <laughs> yeah, like, that's everybody had their own advice some of the relationships that we had though um they didn't they didn't understand so yeah. you know some of our friends didn't understand when we talked to them about it um they didn't understand so we so we really just cut ties we stopped calling people we started isolating ourselves a little bit um, we stopped going to the gym because people kept on asking like how's everybody doing um and we just didn't want to talk about i didn't it. want to talk about it because, because is it is it just you're so weary you're so tired of answering that question you're so it's the, well it's and the, also... the stigma it's the yeah. it's the stigma that others see i mean as as parents uh, out there um there is a stigma attached to um, mental illness or alcoholism or drug addiction yeah. that uh, that when you bring it up to others that that don't believe it's have never disease. experienced it and don't believe it's a disease, they look at you differently, yeah. and it makes you. Then they they start judge. Then I started feeling I, I was judged, and um, so then that's when I I stepped back and said I don't I don't want that feeling anymore. So we stopped. Communicating yeah, we people. just kind of hung back and did our own thing for a while and just stayed to ourselves. And so that was the that was as 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 things progressed, <clears> you know, <throat> her job was in jeopardy, and then my business, I just I, my head wasn't in the game. I and mean, when your head's not in the game and something, you're, you 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 stop 
making money yeah. and uh, you know and tell me this John as a I mean I you know I have two daughters right. um, you know as a, as a dad as a pops I, I, I want to think of part of my role is like it bothers me when I can't protect them from something right. how as a father how did that um, how was it when when you knew you you can't control this thing you can't control this person you can't control this addiction you you can't protect it you right? can't yeah, you eventually come to that conclusion that you can't protect them, you can't change things, um, and that's when boundaries become important to, to to mitigate some of the the feelings that you have and get you back on track of as you as a whole. Yeah, um, and that's where boundaries come into play. And it, it you know, like we've like in the beginning we were talking about how it, it it's it's a boundaries. It takes a while for them to start to come into your thoughts. Yeah. And then once they do, then it's hard to put them into action because you don't want to hurt anybody. Yeah. Because when you first think of a boundary, it's like, oh, I'm going to hurt that person that I was protecting. Yeah. yeah. But now I see that but when, once you get that, once you, once you get that, 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 once you see everything that's, that's happening to you, the boundary does start making things better. Yeah. And I just want to take a moment and say to you all, if you're watching this right now and you're the one struggling, you're where John and Carrie have been, where you guys were for years, if you're watching that and you're saying, man, that's me, that's me, I'm, I'm enmeshed in this relationship. I'm trying to control the addiction and it's, it's outside of my control and I don't have these boundaries in my life. That's why we're talking about this tonight. It's why we're going to keep talking about this because you need to know you're not alone. Uh, people have been there, people have walked in your shoes, and people are still breathing, they're still living. They're here to talk about it, they're here to give some hope. So I want you all to share a bit, what was, um, was there, in the recovery world, we often talk about a rock bottom, and I hit my bottom. That's when I, I was experienced the gift of desperation, that's when I reached out for help. What was it where you said, enough's enough? I need to reach out, and what did that reaching out look like, or what did that setting up of a boundary look like? Well, we, we figured out that our life became unmanageable. I mean, really, at the bottom, it's we figured out that our, our life had become unmanageable, and the rock bottom became is really where we were sitting here together, no friends, a, both both of our jobs becoming we're non-existent. <laughs> yeah raveling apart and it was just it really things became just started unraveling really the the fundamentals of happiness of 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 work play um you know you know home ownership and things like that mm -hmm. really those fundamental things of life just started to unravel and and when we found that everything was gonna and once all that was gone there was no hope for ourselves the addiction is is about to win yeah. is, is how we felt yeah. and we had to make some boundaries to bring ourselves back out of that hole and start building our life back together and we started becoming happier and it, it was little thing it was it wasn't overnight it was yeah it was a long, baby steps so, baby and step. people we, we've got to understand that this work of boundaries it's not like we wake up one morning and say you know what here's what i'm going to do i'm going to change my entire life we we set baby steps in right. place and we say here's one and i'm going to stick to that today mm -hmm. we'll, we'll, we'll get to tomorrow when tomorrow gets here well and the here's hard another. part about being a couple too is that i may have a boundary but he may have a different boundary yeah. And that was a big thing. That, that was, by that was a big thing. Communic trying to create boundaries that work for both of us was, 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 a, was, was a struggle with us. So were there times where you guys just totally butt heads oh, absolutely. and your marriage became... Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Our marriage was on the rock. I mean, really, I mean, to put it in, in, in blue-collar terms, it was on the rocks. I mean, it was like, I want to do it this way. You think you want to do it that way. And it seemed like whenever I was strong and set a boundary, he wouldn't and vice versa. Ah. So then he'd be strong and then I wouldn't. So how do you do it now? Do you work as a team? Do you make these decisions We talk about it together. And, and that, yeah, we talk about it together. But this, but our talking about it together, like you're asking right now, yeah. is years in the making. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah. Which again, I, I think yeah. it's so, if you're watching this and you're saying, how come I can't get this? They seem to get it, how come? Because they're talking about years easily. in the making. Yeah, right. it didn't come like, easily. This isn't overnight stuff. So as I stated a, a few minutes ago, you all have been part of this free community almost from the beginning. At least we started in our backyard, you weren't part of that, but then we soon moved into our current space and you guys were there from the very first week. Yeah. Uh, from the perspective of being the loved ones, that second cat category, the loved ones of the addicts, um, what has this community meant to you? Well, this community is, um, it's a community of hope. Um, it's a community where addicts and loved ones of addicts can all be together in one room and nobody's pointing the fingers at each other because I feel like the whole like Al-Anon AA thing is kind of like, well, this is for me and this is for you. And I like the fact that it's all together, yeah. that we're all loving each other, whether you're an addict or not. Yeah. That's, yeah. That we all get to come together. Yeah. yeah. That's a beautiful thing. Yeah. What about for you, John? What's this community you know, meant to you? Freeze meant to me. Um, it's it's really the community spirit, and you you don't you, you know our terminology is we don't do shame, yeah. and I can walk in those doors and feel right at home every time I walk in there. I, I feel like I'm there for somebody, and somebody's there for me, and uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't change a thing how I how I entered into free. I wouldn't change it a bit right now. I love having you all in this community. Thank you. And I know you've helped a lot of people. I know you're gonna to continue to help a lot of people. Speaking of helping people, I wanna end with this. Carrie, if you're comfortable as a mom, and then John, I wanna ask you to do the same thing. To someone who's, who's just sitting there watching this thinking, I'm never gonna get there. Mm -hmm. I don't know how she did it, but I'm never gonna get there. This is impossible. You don't understand. This addiction is so bad, and I'm watching them suffer and struggle and I'm never gonna have peace in this, what's a word of hope you can give to a mom out there struggling? I guess all I can say is it does get better. Hang in there. I mean, I did I did use like Al-Anon and Naranon as my sources for, and free, of course, for um, surrounding myself with communities of people that do understand and aren't judging me. I do feel like if you just go and take care of yourself first, but until you get yourself straight, you can't really help your child. And yeah. so um, I found that by by focusing on myself, I actually helped her. Mm. And it's kind of ironic, but um, yeah. And so so there is hope out there. There is, you know, hang in there. Um, when it feels like the worst, you know, it, it will get better. Mm. John, what do you say to, to, a, to a fellow dad who's watching their son or daughter battle? You know, I say, um, you know, find a community. You know, free has helped me immensely. Um, community is everything. You can talk to others that have experienced what you're experiencing. Um, you know, I know a lot of people will be sitting back watching this going, my circumstances are totally different. They're not. It's just that uh, I'm in a different place now, and I and I do know where you're at. I do know where others are at right now. If you're if you're just starting on this journey, um, it feels hopeless, and you probably don't know who to turn to. But I was there. I mean, I was I was there by myself, wondering what the hell do I do tomorrow? You know, mm -hmm. and. Um, Find a community like free, and it's it's like I said, it's it's there for the taking. Um, you just got to reach out a little bit and experience it. So if that's you that they're talking about, if you're one of the ones struggling, I want to encourage you to connect with this community. Connect with us on our Facebook page. Uh, we have a, a community who's going to love you. We don't do shame. We don't ever do shame in this community. We walk the journey together. Connect with us on our website, freespiritualcommunity.com. You can send us a message there. You can download the app. It too is free. Connect with us. One of those three ways, we would love to be in touch with you. We would love to walk with you in this community. Thank you all so much for being with us tonight. Thank you for having good, us. Good being here. Peace.